the artwork mysteriously appeared on the board. scores from the multiple choice test, I can uh, really challenge you and put in some really tough questions. Can we see the scores? Yeah. Can we? The historical average for 110 is under 14 out of 30 correct. This group is shy of 20 out of 30 correct. Average. So, Average. Probably more people above 20 than any group of average size. Percentage wise, definitely a higher percentage of people. Can we um, come to you after class and get individual scores? Yeah. If the grade, well here, if the test grade that's posted on Blackboard is not, it doesn't end at 0 0.3, 0 0.7, or 0, then yes, that has the test corrections figured into it. as I hand stuff back. say the old tests is probably the best the, the best thing to look at. It'll be 15, definitely 15 through 21. Uh, some stuff from today and uh, the last time I did the eight week for 110 I threw in a couple of questions from 
six through ten. I mean, just simple stuff. I give you the velocity of an object, I give you its mass, what's the momentum? What's the kinetic energy? square roots by hand? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I kind of remember. If I see it, I'll probably remember it. For curiosity, I've done a lot of feet with calculators, but For the electricity part, so chapters 22 onwards, two rules to keep in mind. Apparently, that E with a negative is an electron. The P, P, the P plus. Proton. And N zero. Neutron. So why is it the electrons are so easy to move? Neutrons. Protons and neutrons are in the center of the atom. Yeah. So you got this really hardcore center here, and it's surrounded by these really light particles. Protons, neutrons are roughly the same mass, and it is several orders of magnitude more massive than the electron. So electrons have little mass, and you can easily move them. Uh, the mass of an electron is about 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. And the mass of a proton is about, I think it's 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So we're talking at least a factor of a thousand in terms of mass. So electrons are the ones most likely going to move. Now I can move protons, and I'm about to move a proton in front of your very eyes, <clears throat> despite the difficulty of it. Here we go. Moving a proton. There we go. Moved a whole bunch of protons and neutrons. So pretty much, if you want to move and want to move protons and neutrons, <clears throat> you're moving the entire object. The other thing to keep in mind, well, 
most of you know this next bit anyway. You can just start out with the first word. Opposites attract. Okay. There we go. So opposite charges attract. And like charges. So if you could keep these two things in mind, that will help you out a great deal. So let's, let's, let's transfer some electrons. All right, so this right here, this is an electroscope. Uh, again, go to Jennifer and Dulce, you two are the farthest away. Can you see inside here that there's two little bits of metal foil? Okay, you can see it, you can see it, all right. Get everyone, I guess now on the short angles, you can still see it and see, all right. <clears throat> so this is electrically neutral, and if it were not, I'd just touch it and I would ground it. Grounding, a ground is some source of electrons or something that you can take a whole bunch of electrons or give up a bunch of electrons, either way. So if that's negatively charged, if I touched it, I would pull the electrons off of it. If it's positively charged and I touched it, I would give it electrons. I'm a large enough body that I would be considered a ground. So if it's negative, you take it, positive, you give it. Yeah because it wants to go to zero. Mm -hmm. Now I can transfer the electrons easily enough by taking some sort of material. against each other. And most of you, I assume, have rubbed your feet across the carpet before and then shocked a sibling, friend, enemy. Uh, same basic principle. Electrons are easy to pull off in some safe situations. So right now, this is potentially negatively charged or positively charged. I'm rigging out near here, and nothing is happening. Oh, there we go, got something happening there. This is a very poor material. Uh, I'm going to go grab the other ones that apparently I left behind. Uh, I'm just going to let it keep recording, so just recognize if you say anything, the world will hear. Hello, world. Greg makes fun of him so that whenever he watches the recording back, he'll realize. <laughs> but it will be too late for him to do anything. So a piece of PVC and wrap it for. Yeah. Uh, as is mentioned in one of the videos. Did you uh, do it yourself? Pardon? Did you do it yourself? Uh, no. Uh, these were here when I got here, but uh, I can assure you that the rabbits moved to a very warm climate. They didn't need fur anymore, and so they came in top. Okay. But they were living very comfortably on a farm down south in the Caribbean. All right. 
Now, I'm not touching it, but there's moving already. Uh, let me ground it. Let's do that again. I will tell you, this works a whole lot better this time of year than in May. All right, so as I bring it near it, the two leaves there, or pieces of metal foil, move apart. And then when I take this away, they move back together again. This is negatively charged, and at some point I hope to remember to explain how I know that. <clears throat> Why do the leaves move apart? When the positively charge goes towards it. <clears throat> you forgot. It's the electrons moving, not the protons. Oh, yeah. This is negatively charged, so protons aren't coming towards it. Electrons are going towards it. Opposites attract with like propels. So they both get negatively charged and then they push apart. How do they get negatively charged? Well, isn't that one already negatively charged and the rod is negatively charged? Uh, no, this should have been. Oh. Uh, this should have been neutral. So it's the opposite of neutral. No, it's still neutral. I can bring this towards it. The electroscope is still neutral, even though those leaves move. What does neutral mean, anyway? No charge. I mean, no, neutral charge. As if there's no charge at all anywhere in there? Mm, no. What do you mean? Then? I don't know. Neutral? I think it balance out. Okay. They balance out. I'll, I'll buy that. Just as many positives as negatives. So as I bring it close to it, this still has just as many positives as negatives. There's electrons and protons all over that thing. So why did why would the leaves spread? Ty was sort of on the right track there. Why would the leaves spread? Charge. Opposite to what? Uh, neutral electrons. So you're saying because those were positively charged? I'm trying to figure out what you're saying. I'm not trying to harass you here. That's a positive, right? This is negatively charged. Oh, this negative. is slightly positively charged. But when you rub it together, this becomes negatively charged. Negatively That's charged. it. Was probably neutral beforehand. All right, we can we can neutralize it. Uh, I need to neutralize it on some piece of metal here, and we fortunately have the metal right there. Let's see how neutral this is. Uh, nope, not that neutral. Now, this the reason I'm rolling it is that this is an insulator. Charges don't flow very nicely on it, so. If, I, if it's negatively charged and I just touch it like that, all I'm doing is going to get rid of the negative charge right there where I touch it. So I have to roll it in order to get rid of more of it. Uh, still can't get, quite get rid of all of it. Really to get rid of it, I would uh, dip it in water. Let's see if one of these others is... Closer to control. There you go. That's neutral to start with. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. So, why do the leaves spread apart? Let's think about the rules down here. Opposite charge. Uh, you say opposite, as if the two leaves are opposite charges? Uh, that's the opposite charge of that. That's neutral, so what's opposite or neutral? Like they charge the same to each other, so they split. Uh, all right, so the two leaves have the same charge when I bring this near it. So why would the two leaves get the same charge? Because they're 
Okay, they are connected to each other. They're connected to each other and they are in insulation. Life repels. Because they're going apart. Okay, so they're the same charge. Now the question is, how do they get to be the same charge? The positive and the negative make neutral? Uh, I, okay. Don't think that answers the question, but <laughs> a true statement. The, so the metal is a conductor, so it, the whole system becomes negatively charged at the same time. So uh, be careful about that. All right, so first off, in terms of this is a, the metal right here is a conductor. If you're ever reading a physics problem and they say a piece of metal, assume conductor. Uh, this, there's a little black disc right here made of, I suspect, Bakelite. It is an insulator. So this is not touching the metal sides here. And then that's just glass. We can slide out in theory. Maybe get a slightly better view. Alright, but this is a conductor. Alright. So, whenever you add the negative charge from the pipe, the whole system, the ball, the rod, and then the leads that are connected become negative as it conducts the charge through them. And then at two ends, they're negative for me to take the charge from there. Right, so you're saying I add negative charge to that, right. and make the whole thing negative. Right. All right. All right, you have just answered a different question. So here, this is the question he just, our uh, question here is the situation he just explained. Nope. Nope. You just explained that situation.